Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen, this time with a monthly report of what the studios have been working on for the last few weeks and what they're focusing on now and the near future. Let's have a look at the UK studios. So this is Wimslow, or the Manchester studio, and Derby. The PMA slash VMA, the Vehicle Manager app and Personal Manager app, have been integrated with the item kiosks, allowing you to buy items, weapons, and clothing that also show in an animated preview of your character trying them on and using them. The arm position with the Moby Glass has been tweaked. There's a fade in and out with the system as well now, and tooltips have been added too. The mining hard was designed and iterated on throughout the month, with implementation work starting soon. They fixed a major quantum travel bug that was causing ships to spin when coming out of quantum travel. They've been improving the general quantum travel experience and making mock-ups and calibrating quantum linking so players can all jump together in the verse when doing missions or just traveling across Cross it. The graphics team have currently been working on multi-layered shaders, which allows materials to be combined and layered dynamically, and multi-resolution gas clouds, which allows for the placement of smaller, more detailed gas clouds inside larger clouds to provide the equivalent of a bespoke location on a planet. And it's crucial for Squadron 42, but it's going to be used in the Persistent Universe as well. The rest of the team worked on generalized GPU particle spline support to improve effects such as beam weapons and lighting, improved glass glass shading for more realistic and dynamic ship canopies and visors, and provided general improvements for all glass and transparent materials as well. VFX have been doing early scanning for visuals and the way the scanning grid is going to be implemented in the cockpit. They've also been working on spline particle emitters that could be used for space anomalies, basically wavy cool things in space, but as I said, also going to be used for mining lasers and things like that. They also investigated general improvements to ballistic weapon effects, such as muzzles and tracer fire. Uh, Vandal and Xi'an special effects have been further improved for a more unique visual style. The ship team there have been working on the interior of the Hammerhead, performing color palette tests for the ship and looking at the bridge, cargo room and captain's quarters. The 600i exploration module is now complete. They're also working on the escape pods and interior corridor sections of the ship too. The Mustang is in its final art stages. Also, hangar props, modular cable sets, heavy machinery, and updated textures have all been added to the assets library. Ship art team have been pushing hard for the Aegis Clips, the Aegis Avenger reworks, the uh, Origin 600, the Vandal Blade. Most of those ships are in final art and are basically now being polished. Um, final lighting and all that sort of stuff getting done getting the landing gear done, getting damage setups done, levels of detail done, basically all of their finishing stages. Environmental art have been working on the next generation of space stations. This begins with rest stops that are created semi-procedurally, allowing the team to easily populate the persistent universe with many different variations. So they're working on the last few pieces of the rest stop exteriors, mainly the first person level areas around the smaller landing pad entrances, which require higher detail passes than the rest of the large scale exterior. On the interiors, they finalized and approved sets of rooms and worked with design to make sure that their needs are met for them. More work has gone on to procedural prop placement as well as decals and shaders there as well. That means that they can further vary the content of rest stop interiors very dynamically and have a huge amount of variation. Props can spawn with other props on them. So you can have uh, a carton of food with noodles in it and a fork in that on a tray, all being separate props. On the hangar side, the team is finalizing the gray box set in particular, the large functional wall pieces, such as the fuel and repair service modules. They began early material and servicing breakout exploration. The team is also finalizing the animations for the front and top loading hangar doors. They are also now focused on Hurston and its moons for the 3.3 patch in September, as well as props and art for Lawville, the hero landing zone on Hurston. The animation have been working on Vandal blockouts. They've uh, focused on combat AI actions, so grenade throws, diving away from grenades, and tested different combat styles for varied enemy archetypes 
untrained versus trained kind of combat. The team also spent some time on player locomotion, moving stop assets from animation driven to entity driven to give a better parity between local client and server, weapon malfunctions and tweaks to various FPS weapons. They also continue to iron out popping and glitching with the existing usable animation sets. They've also been looking at animation assets for players getting knocked down in combat. They're also implementing the new lean mechanics as well which will be primarily used behind cover. Cover is no longer marked up by designers as a special cover state, now it's much more systemic with players um, deciding what to crouch or hide behind and how to use the environment to their advantage. Being able to lean out and fire is now part of that. They also worked with animation to improve the look and feel of the start, steps, stops and turns of a player. This was to make the control more responsive as required from the first person view while also looking good in third person view or when seen in multiplayer. They are also tackling the functionality to overclock ship items and all the advantages and risks that entails. For example, overclocking engines might produce more thrust, but that overheat and wear down faster. This is part of a holistic system dealing with an item's quality level, wear, damage, and so on. These factors will ultimately decide how well items function, if it misfires or stops working completely. Engineering have been working on game interaction, including a new inspect mode for anything that a player can carry. Now players picking up an item um, can select whether to stow it or inspect it. While carrying a weapon in the right hand, the player can also pick up and stow smaller items such as ammo and med pens. This action can be done in various states, be it standing, crouching, sitting, or EVA. They're also exploring better solutions for firing recall and bullet spread too. The LA Studio, so the vehicle feature team there have been focusing on the scanning feature which is making good progress. The focus has been more on the code side that's going to be used throughout Star Citizen including for mining and in Squadron 42. The other priority there was object container streaming which is in development as it also relates to making vehicles thread safe. This is one step forward to a larger goal being worked on across the company to provide a significant performance increase in the game. The vehicle pipeline guys have completed their initial setup of the Anvil F8 Lightning Ship. They've also been setting up the Anvil Hurricane while the art team wraps up their work ahead of the 3.2 Alpha release. Tech Art will begin the damage pass on the Hurricane soon. They've continued work on the Mustangs as well, which are getting reworks, and they're getting their damage passes for the um, Aegis Avenger revision and the Origin 600i. They're implementing landing gear compression on other ships. The Misk Prospector is getting a working boom arm that carries the mining and tractor beam tools. The boom arm will work like a turret and aim where the pilot looks so it can mine asteroids or objects on the ground. Gameplay features. So they've developed in-game support for groups, friends, chat functionality that's all going to be accessible through the Mobiglass and Visor as well as in lobbies. This will be integrated with Spectrum when appropriate as well. The narrative team have worked on the art and design to develop a series of templates to not only help flesh out locations and biomes across the Star Citizen universe but also provide a single consolidated page for anyone in the company that seeks information. Additionally, they worked with design to expand the current list of commodities and resources, kick off text needs for new 3.2 mission content, and deliver a number of weapon descriptions for new items being added to the game in up and coming releases. For Squadron 42, there were several playthrough reviews at the start of the month that were helpful in highlighting areas that can use an additional environmental storytelling pass. The character team revised the Persistent Universe Understitute and Legacy Armors and completed some work on how to implement hair in a more in-depth way. The team also made solid progress on the upcoming new mission givers and clothing for the Port Olasar collection. Work on characters, fauna and alien archetypes also continued and they implemented the new glass shader tech on helmets. The Austin Studio. Design there started moving forward with the economy and the new pricing model and incorporating an internal recipe component for each item in game. This involves extending the commodity and resource list to make it more representative of a final product. So recipes are broken out into three major components, resources, materials, and parts. Basic resources can be mined and scavenged around the universe. Those resources can be delivered into refineries and transformed into materials. Finally, manufacturers will combine resources and materials to create parts. The finished purchase 
items are comprised of a combination of logical parts and materials. This is responsible for a portion of the item's price, which will give players the ability to exert influence on the price through avenues such as mining, trading, scavenging, etc. They've also had a focus on making quantum linking more intuitive with the party system. They've added a calibration state, so destinations will need to be calibrated prior to quantum travel being initiated. Whether or not a group can quantum will entirely de be dependent on party members being near each other and being aligned towards the quantum destination being calibrated to. Once the target is calibrated, the master calibrator can enable the quantum for all aligned members. The design team has also added orbital splines. These will allow players to select a destination on the surface of a planet, assuming they're inside the planet's sphere of influence, and travel to any known location in a single quantum jump. This can be curved around because it uses splines, and splines are curved points. Um, this system generates a spline for the players to travel on. For the first iteration, IFCS will likely align the ship when a player initiates the quantum travel. The ship will travel along the created spline above the atmosphere with the destination in view at the end of the quantum travel and the trajectory will aim the ship down into the atmosphere once it's arrived. The team believes this feature will enhance the planetary quantum travel experience. Quantum travel will not be functional in atmospheres, but once a ship has exited the atmosphere, it can jump to another surface location in a single quantum travel jump. They also implemented animations for Levski's next two mission givers, Reco and Wallace. While they're not currently on the roadmap, if ready, they will make an appearance in 3.2. Art concentrated on the high poly modeling phase of the Constellation Phoenix. They work to get some interior areas to a final stage, which helps them move on to the next area. In a couple of weeks, they will start the ship setup process, and model out the damage and levels of detail, and get interaction areas working. They also continued the detail pass on the F8 Lightning by applying bombs, decals, and final geo tweaks. Backend services have updated some of their services with some new architecture. The First is the login service, which coordinates and streamlines the initial login process for the client with the backend. The new login um, service better manages authentication, notifies required backend components, processes new entities, items and rentals, and handles error reporting. They've also started planning on new services for things like reputation, wallet, badge, and insurance kind of things. Animation worked on the mission givers and Brunt, a gruff new female shopkeeper. They've also started work on the bartender and bartending functionality. Ship animation continue to improve the speed of the pipeline and have also been updating cockpits of all types with better trigger presses, button presses, and generally improving the cockpit experience. Operations have been helping out with performance and stability enhancements. There's an extensive pass as well over turret functionality and starter ships to help the live design identify and prioritize some problem areas. They are looking forward to the 3.1.4 update, which should come out soon to live, which includes some much anticipated Gravlev, IFCS and ESP improvements and crash fixes. The Foundry 42 Frankfurt Studio. The weapons team there finished the final art pass on the Gemini F-55 and Democo um, light machine guns. The team also did research and concept work on personal gadgets and continued various toolset improvements. Engine tools focused on stability and usability for the game editor, including better data core integration, improved object container workflows, improved cinematic tools, improved editor startup times, procedural tool integration and general editor stability and code cleanup of legacy code. The VFX team refined the look of the overall Xi'an tech style updating explosions and quantum travel. They've also worked on mining effects. Lighting worked on the modular rest stops with a first lighting pass on them. The Persistent Universe level design team finished the white box of Lawville and together with the art team began the process of bringing Lawville to its final quality with the grey box and final art. 
There's still work to be done, but the progress is on track. This will be the first proper flagship landing zone, dwarfing Levski in scale. They've also began whiteboxing train stations located along the outer perimeter of the city. These will bring players and NPCs from the planetary surface to the civilian district, as well as to garages for spawning vehicles. They whiteboxed the spaceport and many hangars that will come up with it, since the team expects heavy traffic in these flagship locations from both players and AI. They also planned additional content for Area 18 to bring it up to a full landing zone state. This means designing the space for a proper spaceport, shops and services, as well as adjusting it to accommodate all the new content. They also continued work on the procedural tools and looked into procedural prop placement and built a library of white box rooms and connectors that the tool will use to generate stations. Environment art are in full production with Planet Hurston and the Lawville landing zone. They are wrapping up the first pass on two of Hurston's ecosystems, a trash mesa and acidic biomes. Expect to see improved material transitions and better integration of things like rocks and terrain assets on the surface of not just those particular things that are putting in the game, but also in general with all the moons that we currently have with Yeller and Damar and all that sort of jazz, giving everything a more natural and integrated look and feel. Lawville has also moved into full production. Um, QA are working on a lot of subsumption based testing. Tech Art have continued rigging on numerous weapons, the Gemini F-55 light machine gun, the Castec Arms sniper rifle, the Scalpel, uh, and the Klasenwerner Demico light machine gun as well. They're also working on leaning, uh, aim down sights, version 2 of the character customization system. Moreover, they've streamlined the character assets like hair, beards, glasses, armor, and clothing. The cinematics team have finished a sprint to get all high, critical, and medium priority narrative scenes represented in in the Squadron 42 build. They are dialing in environmental art for a key spoiler location. Service materials are being updated to their current standards. Engine guys, the entity component scheduler was refactored to ensure a clearer API, allowing a more flexible way to control components by, for example, implementing new activation policies or update frequencies. A new system, a CIG Profile, was introduced to replace the previous data collection systems. This design keeps a history of performance data. They implemented an auto-performance capture that automatically triggers a dump of the performance metrics based on configured settings. Building on this system, they're implementing a continuous telemetry system which always collects performance metrics, allowing the team to immediately see changes and react accordingly. The system is currently in a prototype phase. They also improved the full tracker by making data serialization asynchronous, which helped the issues with server disconnects. They also supported the UK team with object container streaming work. They've optimized servers and background threads, allowing code to run in parallel that wasn't able to do before. They've also been working on numerous other tasks that included optimizing uh, subsurfaces scattering, um, several fixes for large memory leaks of video and system memory and chromatic aberration rendering improvements to preserve sharpness in the center of the screen, stuff like that, lots and lots of things. The AI team implemented the first version of the character skill editor. This new tool allows designers to create skill settings for NPCs, individually configuring them and defining how skills and traits influence different stats. Stats are the ways skills and traits are converted into numbers that will influence internally the code performing the different actions. So skills and traits can also be used directly in behaviors to drive the behavior selection. So an NPC can have a different outcome of specific actions based on their abilities and decide to perform different actions or branch their decision differently in relation to their traits and skills. To improve the combat experience, they introduced the ballistic prediction to use grenades and any ballistic weapon. Now NPCs will be able to understand what type of prediction is required by what weapon they want, enabling the team to create weapon types more efficiently and allow more variations in behaviors. They also improved the movement system to allow the selection of the transition between locomotion and in cover state. So NPCs can now correctly align to the cover location in relation to the direction of their target. For dogfight behaviors, they introduced behavior improvements to split fighters and gunships, so players will experience NPCs attempting different attacks 
strategies based on the ship and its physical abilities. Pilots flying fighters will attempt to decouple their movements with their attacks, while gunship pilots will prefer to circle their targets to take advantage of their turrets. Work started on the Vandal characters prepping all the basics of their behaviour so design can iterate on them. The system design team was busy with AI related features. FPS AI now know how to flank the player to surprise them and throw grenades in numerous ways and situations. Design work is also wrapping up on how NPCs react to grenades thrown at them, whether they get surprised or leap out of the way for example. For ship AI they're splitting the combat behaviours into pilot subclasses so that the AI know how to fly ships and then have specific tactics for them. For example, a Starfarer should not dogfight like a Gladius. A Starfarer pilot needs to be aware of the turret placement and not necessarily use their main guns to attack. They also assisted the AI team with the initial pass on the Vandal Combat AI and continued populating modular hangar common elements with NPCs to make the places feel more alive. This will be an ongoing process until each location feels adequately populated. Turbulent, so Spectrum 3.7.4 was released to live. This release included a block list, custom roles and custom MOGs. They completed a series of user interviews to improve plans for the voice slash friend channels in Spectrum. They also completed work on the friends list and they are currently trying to get the friend system feature complete. It should go into testing by the end of May. They're also involved with work on the group system that will change the way you play with your friends in game. For the RSI website, there's some new security measures which were added to prevent brute force attacks and reduce hacked accounts. The two-factor authentication was added for melting and gifting of pledges, which you will need to put on your account if you want to do either of those actions. They also tweaked the back end for the information importing that goes from the internal schedules to the roadmap each week. So the way we see the roadmap is directly related to the internal schedules of CIG and Foundry 42. And that was it for this month's monthly report. I know it's quite a, a long video, uh, but there was quite a lot in there and obviously you're going to get that with these monthly reports. Um, anything you'd like to talk about or highlight, chuck in the comments below. We will break down some of that into separate videos or bring it into other videos and I'll talk about some bits on stream. Every month we have a ship giveaway. This time for May, it's for a Tonkin Turtle, the Tumbrel Nova Tank, and a Terrapin, donated by our spotlighted org, the Talons Outer Haven. They are a prominent Star Citizen roleplay organisation that is focused on exploration and kinship, as well as player character-driven lore. They also have their own roleplay-related internet radio station, which is a real radio station which you can listen to, uh, which is called Radio Free Outer Haven. They are recruiting for those interested in roleplay and want to participate in the alpha testing and development of Star Citizen. Links below to their org and radio station. They are incredibly friendly. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that ship and vehicle bundle is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and then comment on any of my May YouTube videos throughout the month. Each video gives you another chance to win. For more information on anything we talked about, check the links down below. A special thank you to my Patreons and donators. Your support allows me to create the amount of focused content I do. Again, links to further support the channel are down below as well. Please remember to like and subscribe as it really does help me, as does your feedback. Please take care, guys, and I'll see you in the verse.